The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me and have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet, if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. So that gospel, Jesus is really blasting the Pharisees for not believing and the scribes, those that don't believe him. But when I was going over the readings last night, one thing really struck me was how Moses prefigured Jesus in more than one ways. And uh, so I'm going to start off with just, I'm just working that Exodus uh, reading we had, our first reading. and. Uh, Plan A, God's plan A for the, the Israelites was that Moses leads them out of Egypt through all these miracles, gets them through the Red Sea, gives them the commandments, they journey across the desert, they go to the promised land. So he leads them to the promised land. That's plan A. But while Moses is up on Mount Sinai talking to God, only a couple of weeks after they've left the Red Sea and the incredible miracle, they're down on the on the bottom of the mountain and they build this golden calf. Moses doesn't know about it, God knows about it, and God's infuriated. And God's ready to destroy all of the Israelites and start over with Moses like he did with Abraham and a family and just start from scratch with Moses. He's so upset with the Israelites. And uh, so that's plan B, destroy everything and start again with Moses. And uh, Moses shows this incredible solidarity with his people, his love for his people. And he says, God, if you destroy them, kill me too. That was that first reading. And so God has a choice of plan A or plan B. God relents, shows mercy, and he continues with plan A so that Moses then leads them across the desert into the promised land. So that story prefigures Jesus. And what's amazing is that Jesus accomplishes both plan A 
and plan B. So first, plan B. Jesus takes on our sin. He dies with us, just like Moses was willing to die for his people if God was going to destroy him. Jesus decides to die for us. He takes our sin and he dies for us. And we too die. Nobody, as Father Jacob Matthew says, nobody gets out of this alive. <laughs> we all die. And so Jesus dies with us. And um, so that was the plan B. And, but through Jesus' death, there's resurrection. And Jesus is like the new Moses, okay? And uh, we are his new creation through baptism. Through baptism, we become children of God. We become the body of Christ. And so Jesus, the new Moses, then leads us through this desert of life, if you will, into the heaven that we all look forward to, to the promised land for us. And so, look at that, Jesus accomplishes plan B. He dies with us, shows us incredible solidarity and love for us. And then, but he also accomplishes plan A, which is to take us to the promised land. And so, and I was look, I just marvel at that, you know, how the God in his wisdom and his foresight and writing scripture has put the Paschal mystery there in Exodus. And it shows us how, you know, what's gonna happen in, you know, this prefiguring, foreshadowing of what Jesus is gonna do, that he's gonna die for us, just as, as Moses was willing to do for the Israelites there. And so this past Sunday, the vestments were pink or rose. And um, we did that every year, do that every year because it's, the middle of Lent, and we remind ourselves that we're not depressed because of Lent. We're a, a joyful people. We rejoice. And so today, I think we should rejoice in this incredible solidarity that Jesus shows with us and be joyful because of uh, what he did for us, making us his children and leading us to the promised land. Amen.